Good morning, folks. Welcome to another chip break. We're going to change these up. We're going to cover some shop updates in every chip break, but we're also going to include one business lesson or takeaway or assignment or homework or, or point on entrepreneurship. Uh, the first thing I want to mention, though, is we got our holders in from Meritool, and I really uh, got to give them a shout out. And it's such a good way to tie in what we're going to end this video with, with 10 things that I think really I try to take to heart. But this is just, it just exudes quality. Uh, they happen to also be a really good value, which is a sort of a rare confluence where you've got somebody producing a really high quality product. Um, and these are made in America and the quality does seem to be spectacular. Uh, I was joking, this is like the third time I've ever even held a Cat 40 tool holder. That's a three quarter inch set screw. Here's an ER32, I think. But you can just tell, it's just awesome. But it's beyond just the tool holder. The packaging was great and they had a promotion. I think if you spend over $1,500, they give you a discount and free shipping. But even though it was free shipping, they packaged them all well and even put them in two different boxes, which you know it's, they didn't try to cut corners there. And then look at this. This is kind of what made me think I need to mention this in the video, is they include this nice um, sort of wax paper envelope. Inside of it is the invoice, a little business card, and it just stands out. So, you know, some swag that came with it. The tool holders are, are great quality as well, you can tell. Uh, it just, you know, they don't, nothing here is an afterthought. The ER college came in nice cases. These are actually going to work great because we can pull these out and just drop these foam inserts into our Kaizen foam uh, toolbox drawers. Uh, our organization video is coming out this week, by the way, on that. So really just wanted to give them a shout out. It kind of makes you excited to, to, to get something like this. And Eric over at Orange Vice was able to film at their factory. So here's a card to, uh, to their YouTube video where you get a little bit of the insight on Marital. So definitely check that out. Here's a little sneak preview on the 440 automation project. It's back, a uh, video coming out probably next week on it, but this is the plate that we plasma cut and these will be the indexing bar that shuffles these clamps around and drops them through when they're done. You say good morning? Shut. We are taking a class on scraping. If you don't know what scraping is, it's a way to make things really flat, even flatter than surface grinding, which is pretty weird. Uh, so more to come on the class when we take it in January, but I need your help. I really wanna buy one of these uh, a piece of cast iron to use as a parallel. I want to scrape a parallel and that's kind of my project. Something like 18 to 24 inches long. But you can buy these finished parallels for, you know, from instance from Suburban Tool, great company, but they're 500 or 800 bucks. Plus these are done. I want a rough casting. So does anybody have any advice? Um, should I buy a piece of cast iron or Durabar or is there a way I can find one of these rough castings and, and machine it myself and then take it to the class to scrape in? This Friday, we are hosting a webinar for the HSM Works Fusion 360 uh, you know, Autodesk CAM group. So check that out. There's a link here. You can sign up. It's free. It's uh, 1 o'clock East Coast time. There'll be a YouTube video published afterwards, but we're going to talk about some, uh, some CAM tips and tricks, including some 2D and 3D adaptive projects. Check it out. I meant to include this a few weeks ago, but we sent the injection mold that we made to... Uh, Peyton over at X39 Brick Customs and he shot the mold and it worked. I, I think this is awesome. Look at the, the detail, look at it, it worked. Uh, this is our first time we've ever made it. You guys saw the video on the 440, just almost speechless. How, how cool is that? Also, here's a card we did, uh, I thought it was pretty cool, an engraving on an AR lower and some of the things I've been frustrated with before, especially with things like his engraving, is understanding where that engraving is on the finished part, because all we're doing is the engraving. Everything else is done. So what we did was we used Fusion 360, we brought a photo in, and we were able to place the engraving over the photo and really get a, see, a look and feel for what it is going to do uh, or what it's gonna look like. And then I wanna end this with our point, which is this list of 10 things and I've had, it's always been called 10 things. I've had this on my desk for about 10 years, coincidentally. And I'm not huge always on the self-help, the lists type stuff, but this one has always caught my eye. So let's walk through it. Get good at something, really get good at it. Just own it. What is your thing? Is it 
Is it machining? Is it machining a particular material? Is it machining one part at a time? Is it machining a hundred things at a time? Or, or is, it, is it making knives? Get good at something. Be known for that. Be proud of it. It takes practice, period. You have to, it just takes time. Get obsessed. This, I love this one. Be obsessed. Uh, that's for me, uh, that's how I got to where I was. Again, 10 years ago, I didn't know what a bridge port was or an end mill was, and I am obsessed. I love machine. I love CNC. You can't bore me with it. It's what I want to talk about. I love it. Um, doing something well and thoroughly is its own reward. This kind of ties into another thing I was thinking of really, which is you make your own happiness. For me, that is the reward. I love that I get to do what that is, and that is what makes me happy. Period. Love it. Um, show and tell. <laughs> For, I just reread the FSM comment there, but uh, talk about it. Share your pride. Uh, you, maybe you don't be overwhelming about it, but don't you don't have to say you know in the closet about it. When you're passionate about doing something, find the people that you want to be around that appreciate you for who you are. And it's interesting. I can have. A, it's, it, there's a vivid memory I have of a number of years ago. I had a lengthy conversation at a wedding with a, a distant family member who was a chef. And he talked forever about this technology for this oven, making these like baked goods or souffles or something. And I could care less about cooking, technology, kitchens, oven, baking, any of that stuff. But his passion, his obsession with this thing, it was so fascinating to hear him talk about it that it didn't matter that that wasn't my thing. I loved hearing him and seeing him do it. I want to be around people like that. It's so cool. If you want something, ask. You, you just have to ask, you know, whether it's getting help for something for us, whether it's doing a, a YouTube partnership you know, with Adam Booth on that video, you have to ask for it. You don't get what you don't ask for. Uh, have goals. Goals are an interesting one. We should talk about them more. I, I definitely think they're important and I like them. I tend to find that they're more of the byproduct of everything else rather than sometimes what you exactly set on. It's kind of a weird nuance, but it's something you should think about and set some time up. Where do you want to be you know, in a week and, and where do you want to be long term? Number eight, I love. Be nice to everyone. And I'd love to say I do this all the time. The truth is I don't, but I try to. And, I, and it's because I've seen some people around me that that aren't. And it, the cliched example is everybody wants to be nice to their hero or to somebody they look up to. But are you nice to the, the quintessential example of being the waiter? Are you nice to the cab driver? Are you nice to the delivery guy? Um, be, be nice. Like it's fun to live your life as a nice person, really. Um, fail. One of my favorite sayings. Fail fast, fail cheap. We did a talk at the Tormach Open House about entrepreneurship, and that was one of my mantras. And that's why I love the shop that I've got, is I can go from idea to part to, you know, I can fail fast, I can fail in a day or two, and I can fail cheap with very little money involved. And then work your ass off. It's interesting. Some people don't believe in this, and they're very successful. And some people intentionally structure businesses where they don't actually have to work their ass off. And honestly, they may be onto something, but for me, it's how I was raised, it's how I've worked for the last 10 years, it's how I've gotten to where I am. Work your ass off. Don't rub it in other people's faces. You don't, don't expect a cookie for it. Work your ass off, good things will come. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.